Welcome to Arch Systems. Uh, delighted to be joined by the Chief Technology Officer, Tim Burke. Great to see you, Tim. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. You, um, basically, Arch Systems has been quite a revolution in this, this industry over the last uh, four or five years. Uh, you started out as uh, uh, gaining a lot of respect, taking over all of the, the data for, for Flex, essentially, uh, worldwide. Um, and with that, you uh, handled all their systems globally. Uh, and brought in a lot of um, savings and things like that to 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 flex. You describe it as uh, top floor changes and and, and line level changes. Uh, talk us through a little bit about what you actually brought to them and and how you've improved their uh, capital equipment uh, management. Yeah. So when you think about what we do with our customers, you know we work with large enterprises uh, typically. So flex, as you mentioned, was one of our most important customers, our starting customer, and. We think about what we do as taking customers from data to insights to actions to improvements. And when we think about those improvements, we find two categories, call them top floor and shop floor. Right. So top floor is if you were an executive in a large EMS company and you had trusted global visibility of what was actually happening on your shop floors, what was your real OE, your utilization, your quality, your first pass yield, not after it passed through a bunch of manual processes, but directly from the machines, trusted, synthesized, could you make better decisions faster to respond to market needs? For example, rather than buying 20 more lines, maybe you move lines around right. because you know you have excess capacity. So when you get a new customer now, you've saved a lot of CapEx. Right. Or you understand that, hey, actually of this kind of equipment, I need to buy many more of these because I can solve a process somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's what we focused on for you know, the first couple of years when we were with Flex is these top floor actions. Right. And then as we did more of that, we realized that there are many other problems that need to be solved, you know, moment by moment on the shop floor. And they result in top line improvements like OEE, like quality, mm -hmm. but there's no one thing, you know, it's like a death by a thousand cuts. You have to have a system which is constantly monitoring the factory, guiding action to process engineers, to quality engineers, test engineers, right. prompting operators. And so we've been adding in more of those sh uh, shop floor features. Mm -hmm. uh, we call a tool called React, which is about reacting to data, that's where the name comes from. So monitoring your factory, knowing exactly how you're doing, are you on schedule, how's your job going, how's the work order going, what's your top problem, mm -hmm. and then action manager, which is about monitoring all of the information coming out of your equipment, synthesizing it through our process insights with these expert modules about attrition, quality, test, you know, repeated failures, pin failures on ICT, and then prompting and guiding actions to your process engineers, your technicians, mm -hmm. not just saying you got a quality problem, but you have a problem exactly here. Is this particular head on this on this nozzle and this feeder, and it's causing you, you know, five percent quality loss at AOI, for example. Right, right. So, so, so basically, the the, the top floor uh, capex savings, you know, is obviously resulted in massive savings for. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, for Flex, and uh, that's uh, reflected itself in you picking up other accounts like Jabel and yep. Plexus recently. Yep. Um, what about on the on the shop floor level? Uh, are you made any? Um, have you contributed to the first pass yield, etc., mm -hmm. uh, and quality improvements on the on the actual processes themselves? Yeah. Um so it happens every day. So we have some customers that are using our tools in all their factories worldwide on the shop floor. Mm -hmm. And every single day, so one factory, for example, a thousand actions they've tracked through our tool in the last month, every single one closed and resulted in an improvement on the shop floor, which contributed to decreased attrition, increased quality, increased performance. Mm -hmm. So it's about it's a way of work using data to then make sure that every shift goes a little bit better than the one before. The line leaders are using data to have meetings. The operators are using data to understand where to focus. Your process engineers are using data to know when they're needed and where they're needed. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of those little actions ultimately result in increased OE. Right. Excuse me, increased OEE, increased yield, and increased throughput from the same lines. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you also um, went into a recent partnership or agreement with, with um, Factory Logics yep. with Aegis. How does that integrate into the, the work that you're doing? Yeah, so so something that's very exciting. We're very proud of this partnership, very excited to work with Aegis mm -hmm. and their their great MES tool factory logics. When we think about what we're doing, you know, data to insights to actions to improvements. If you have a great MES like Factory Logics, you have already a tool for your operators to look at. You have a screen that's in front of that they're using every day. Right. Um, and there's a lot of data in your system which is captured expertly from equipment. So what we're doing is taking data out of Factory Logics, putting it through our insights engine, which would typically connect directly to equipment, mm -hmm. and then turning it into insights and actions, and then putting them back into the MES so that they're shown directly to the operators in the screens they're already familiar with. So it's not about adding a new screen, it's about 
basically using these expert data modules we have in our system on top of data already being collected in your MES like factory logics to have this extra sort of supercharging add-on that then provides these guidance and actions back into the MES right. and it just becomes even more effective. So it's, in it's interpreting that data and bringing it back into actionable. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, we call it intelligent actions for manufacturing. Right, right. Um, no, that's great. Um, so the, the um, other thing that you were doing is you started a couple of years ago the, the insights modules yeah. for smaller companies that want to take part yeah. in this. And if they, if they choose to, they can also share the data and get the benefit of, of that pool of data yeah. uh, to improve their, their processes. Um, how is that, has that been successful? Yeah, so it's now a core part of our product. I have about 40 of these, and they're basically process-specific modules relevant to you know pick and place to AOI, ICT, functional test. Think of like the level of expertise you have in, a, in an expert process engineer. Mm -hmm. That level of understanding in ba baked into a model. And what we've realized over the last couple of years, once we deployed these and put them in, in the field and all of our and all of our customers, is there was a need for one layer on top of it which is knowing which one is relevant for a given problem. So nobody has time to look at all your dashboards and figure out what's going on, but instead now we have this layer called Action Manager, which looks at the dashboards automatically and then re prompts the user with, hey, you might be worried about this. Here you have a problem on this line, on this machine. And this is one area we're actually seeing true AI come into play. These like large language models that can synthesize information for these existing dashboards and tools mm -hmm. and then present not just that there is a problem, but what it is, what you might do about it, and that whole synthesized bit of information presented directly to a process engineer, for example, or a technician, but also then translated into the language of the local of the local operator versus in English or whatever language the right. machine maximum happens to be programmed in. Wow, wow. So, so that's one example of where you're using AI. Are you mm -hmm. using? Is there are there other examples? Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of interesting areas we found. Um, so, I'll give another example. Um, so one of the areas with alerting, for example, or with any sort of condition monitoring is making sure you don't have too many false positives. Because yeah. everyone's very busy, no one wants to be bothered if you don't have an actual problem. And so we found that large language models can be very effective at being sort of a pre-screen or a pre-filter. They can look at the data, look at the information from the machines, look at the context, reason about whether it's likely to be a real issue, summarize what they found, and then if it's a real problem, present that to the user with more context. If it's not, just close it as a false call. Right. Something that you're seeing with inspection machines, but sort of applied more broadly to the entire factory in our tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this industry is changing at a heck of a pace, quite yep. frankly. Both uh, technically, uh, it's growing by application, which is bringing in all sorts of new processes. Uh, and there seems to be a merger between SMT and, and back-end assembly, yep. you know, back, uh, packaging, should I say. Um, what sort of challenges is that bringing you? Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a challenge for our customers, right? Mm. You know, it used to be you had electronics and then semiconductor fab was very different. Right. Now there's a blurring, you have advanced packaging. You might have a die attached line next to an S S SMT machine. Yeah. And if you think about the level of data and analytics that is needed to run a semiconductor fab, now that's also becoming important to similar levels of data for electronics manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing this need for much higher levels of connectivity, much higher levels of expertise and insights. And for us, it's an opportunity to help customers transition, uh, help customers navigate this transition. Mm -hmm. But also, it's just becoming much more complicated, there's much more data, and there's a need for a partner and a tool that simplifies and synthesizes it into actions because it's just, it's getting more and more complicated to run a good factory these days. Right. I mean, I know that some, some of your, your flex factories have got um, clean rooms mm -hmm. in them uh, uh, and, and uh, they run alongside the SMT lines. Uh, do you see that as a growing trend uh, or, or is it just something that the tier ones are, are, are doing? You know, no, I think it is a growing trend. You see like the Chips Act and you see all of the re reshoring and repositioning of global manufacturing mm -hmm. as well as a co-location of advanced packaging next to the SMT lines. I see it as an evolution of these processes. Mm -hmm. It didn't need to be distinct before, um, but now you know there's no reason to have a semiconductor fab here, an OSAT here, an SMT here. Let's put them together when it makes sense. Right. But it, it is leading to challenges of being a lot more widely varying expertise in the same factory to run all of these complex processes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's fascinating to, to, to catch up with you yeah. too, and to hear about all the different things that are happening uh, both at Arch and out in the wider world. So uh, congratulations on the huge success you've yeah. had recently. And uh, thank you for talking to us today. Yeah, thank you very much for talking to us as well. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Good. Great. All thank right. you. I think the Arch FX Manufacturing Platform.
processing over a trillion data points each month, bringing value to every level of your organization. That's Manufacturing Insights for tomorrow.